Hi, I'm Gail with Bernina Vaporville, and today we are going to do stump work. Stump work, if you're not familiar with it, is an old-fashioned embroidery technique where instead of the embroidery being flat, it's actually padded and has dimension. The project that we're, we're going to stitch out two projects today, uh, or just at least to get you started. So in this project, which is our beehive pin cushion, and this is actually going to be a tutorial that we also put up on YouTube, but this is our little beehive and we're going to make the leaves for the beehive today. And the leaves are made up of two pieces of this green palette material and then there's wire in these leaves so that you can kind of bend them and however you would place them on. So we actually made several, ugh, we made several on this pin cushion that get glued on around, but we're going to show you how to make the leaf. Now, if beehive pin cushions aren't your jam, we also have, look at this little guy. Do you recognize this? Some people call this a gold magic ball with wings. I call it a snitch. And we uh, made this with a different technique. So this has a little bit of different materials in it, but as you can see here, we still have the wire in there. Now this technique is done all in your embroidery machine. The basic supplies that you're going to need to make any of these stump work designs is first and foremost, the Bernina Embroidery Software 8. So that is what is possible to do the stitching that allows you to place the wire in place, do the cut work, do the whatever. And so we do carry this at Bernina of Naperville. You can certainly call the store for information, but this is just a staple in our tools that we love to use when we do embroidery. Along with this, you're also going to need the cut work tool. And this is a teeny weeny weeny little tool that replaces the needle on your sewing machine with this little chisel and this little chisel is going to cut instead of sew. With the Bernina cut work tool comes the Bernina 44C foot, which also is the special foot that works in conjunction with this tool. So you're going to need the Bernina cut work tool. In order to do the stump work, you need wire. That's what's in the edge of the leaf and the edge of the snitch wings. And this is actually a 26 gauge wire. It's very thin uh, and it is, it bends around the curves, it bends around the points. And this is just basic 26 gauge floral wire that I purchased at Michael's. It's also available online, but this is not an item that we carry at the store. You're also going to need some stabilizer. In When I made the snitch wings, I used a product, it's called Badge Master, and it's clear, it's made of algae, I think, but nonetheless, it is water soluble. I also used um, just a cheap organza. It's got a little bit of sheen to it, but when I made the snitch wings, I opted to keep the Badge Master in there because I thought it had like a little bit of an insect look to it. So you're gonna need that. Over here, for the beehive leaves that we're making, I have my double-sided green palette material, and then in here is heat and bond light. So we ironed the heat and bond light onto the wrong side of the green material, then peeled the paper off and put another layer of the green material so we have like a double-sided leaf. Then in my hoop is Aqua Mesh Stabilizer. Aqua Mesh is water soluble, just like the Badge Master, but Aqua Mesh has a little bit more durability as it stitches in the hoop. You need thread, and you can pick whatever thread you want, match your leaf color for your beehive, or match your snitch wings. Whatever the case is, you're going to need to use the thread in the top matching the thread in the bobbin. So I'm using Isocord 40 weight embroidery thread for the snitch wings and I'm using Isocord embroidery thread for my beehive leaves. You're also going to need to have a way to get the designs from your computer to your sewing machine once you have completed designing your embroidery. And I use a USB stick you can see here, obviously, this is not a Bernina stick. This is my little Mini Cooper USB stick because when I'm waiting for my designs to stitch out, I can play with my little car. 
but this is an eight gig USB stick. It works really well on my machine. I have a lot of designs on it, but you can use any USB stick on the new Bernina five, seven and eight series machines. So enough talking, let's show you how to design your very own stump work design. Before we get started digitizing a beehive leaf or a golden snitch wings, let's just go through a little bit about the basics of what stump work is when we're creating the designs on our computer. Make sure that you go to www.berninaofnaperville.com to our classes and events section. Click on that and then you'll also see a tab on the left side that will allow you to go to handouts and we are working from the Bernina embroidery software workbook number three page starting with page 31. The first thing that we're going to do is open up a new design. Then we're going to insert some artwork and simply I'm going to use our beehive leaf. I also want to just get right to it and to fit it so I can see exactly what I'm working on. So once I have that selected, I'm going to deselect it because now it's really just about what I'm doing over here. So you have your toolboxes over here on the left and I've got my cut work drawer open and I'm going to select digitize piece. If you notice over here, I have a docker. So if we go to our Cutwork Border Docker, you can see that there's a lot of different things here that we can select. We have a drop-down menu here that can show our stump work piece. We have a stabilizing run, stuff that really isn't gonna make a lot of sense to you right now, but the one thing that will make sense because we're going to do it right now, and this is something to, re to remember. Stump work can use a variety of different gauge wire, but you need to tell the software what wire you have so that it makes the designs nice exactly like you want them to work with the wire gauge that you're using. So we just are going to hit this object properties tab right next to where it's checked with embroidery and where you see wire line. So let's click that and you get this object properties box that pops up. And so we want to use this wire gauge. I'm using 26 gauge and so we already have selected the right one for what is in my library. But look, there's 24 to 32 size. So 24 is going to be a little bit thicker than 26 and 32 is going to be really fine. That's right. With wire, it kind of does the same thing as your thread weight. The higher the number, the thinner the wire, the lower the number, the thicker the wire. And just say OK once you've made the adjustment for the size wire that you're using. And now we're ready to digitize and make our stump work projects. On the left hand side of the screen, we have edit, auto digitize, digitize, and then we have cut work and stump work. I know that this class is on stump work, but believe it or not, we're actually going to dip into the cut work piece here and we are going to select digitize piece. So once we've selected digitize piece, all we're going to do is we're going to set our digitizing line by left clicking on the corner, the lower left hand corner of the leaf. And now I'm going to right click to make it round because remember lefty pointy righty roundy. And I'm just going to trace our leaf and once I get to the point I'm going to left click. Now I have curves again so I'm right clicking down the leaf. And now I am going to set a final left click and now hit enter on the keyboard and that's going to set my design. And now you can see here in our color film area that we indeed have a series of different things that are happening. So the first thing that has been created is a simple placement stitch for where you're going to put your fabric for the stump work. Then it creates the choo-choo tracks that you're going to follow your wire in between. Then it creates the tack down stitch. Then 
the cover stitching or the satin stitching with a stabilizing stitch around it. And then finally, it creates the cut work pieces that are going to be used with the Bernina cut work tool. If you're not familiar with the show artistic view versus showing the stitch view, I'm looking at this in stitch view. It's not very pretty. Uh, you can see that the stitches are kind of a line drawing. If you want to be sure, sure, sure that this is going to stitch out pretty, you can click this show artistic view and you can see more about how the stitches are going to look. But I'm pretty happy with the way that this stump work leaf looks. So let's get it ready to send to the machine. So now that my design is selected, I don't need my photo anymore. So I'm going to click on the photo in my color film. Then I'm going to press my delete button on my keyboard and I'm getting rid of my original photo. It, I didn't delete my photo off of my computer. I just deleted the photo out of the mix of this design. Once my design is ready and I'm happy with it, I can send it directly to my sewing machine. So I'm going to do this by hitting the clicking on the right to card machine. It's the little sewing machine icon right at the top of the window. So I'm going to select that. I'm selecting the USB stick that says EXP. This is going to take this file and convert it from uh, the art file that we created it into an EXP design that's going to be readable on the sewing machine. And then I just say OK. I want to take a moment about making multiple copies of something in a hoop. With our beehive pincushion, we actually have between six to eight leaves that we need to create. And I have selected the, I'm using a Bernina 8 series, and I want to pick the jumbo hoop, because that's the largest hoop that the Bernina 8 series can take. And then I want to go up here to my zoom tool, and right next to it, there's a drop down menu, and I'm going to select to hoop. So now we can see my leaf in relation to my hoop. And on the software, there's a feature that I love. It's called right click and drag. So instead of left clicking and dragging, which would move the leaf around the screen, right click and drag makes a copy. And so what I'm going to do is make some copies of this design so that I can stitch pretty much all of my leaves right in one hoop. Now, if you were trying to do this in the sewing machine, which you absolutely can on the Bernina 880 Plus, just make sure that when you make your copies in the hoop on the sewing machine, that you do not rotate or mirror or enlarge or reduce the designs because that will monkey with the cut work items that are here. It, we want to make sure that if we're going to do any rotating, any changing of angles, anything like that, you do it right in the software before you send it to the machine. So here we are ready to stitch out our beehive leaf. You can see that I've pulled it into the machine here. So now the first stitch after I've threaded my green thread in the needle and in the bobbin is to stitch a placement line. Don't forget that on the Bernina 880 Plus, it is gonna remind you to thread the bobbin for embroidery, which we've done. Now I'm going to put my double-sided fabric down right over top of that stitching line. And the next stitching line that's going to stitch are actually two lines pretty close together. And that's also going to be the train tracks that we're going to keep track of when we line up our wire through here. So let's just stitch that out next. Okay. 
This stitch right here is going to be a zigzag stitch, and this is a zigzag stitch that's gonna sew over the wire that's going to be in the edge of the leaf. And I wanna point out something to you. Over here on my machine, I have plugged in my foot control. So I've got my foot control for my Bernina 880 right here. So instead of actually a, a controlling the machine with the stop start button, I'm gonna use the foot control so that I can stop it on a dime as I wiggle this wire around those little choo-choo track lines that I'm going to. Here is a length of wire that I cut. I made sure that I cut an ample amount to go around my leaf. So now I'm going to just try to straighten this out as best I can right in the middle of those two lines. And now I'm going to stitch. And I seriously wanna take this one stitch at a time. Now, as I get around this curve, I'm gonna stop and bend just a little. But can you see that I'm just going, taking that wire and centering it right in between my little, I'm calling them choo-choo tracks, because that's what I feel like I'm doing here. I'm laying down the Stumpwork Railroad. All right, I'm at the tip. I'm bending this around. I'm gonna encourage it to go right on the path. Straighten out my wire. Get it right into position. So now I'm going to stop down for just a moment because I want to trim my thread right there. And I'm using scissors that are not dear to me. Got rid of that and removed my piece. Now I'm going to get just to the very edge and finish. So it's done. And then I'm going to trim this piece. The color that's going to stitch is first the zigzag covering stitch that goes over the wire. So this is a satin stitch that will cover all the wire so you don't see any of it poking through. The next stitch is what I'd like to call a stabilizing stitch. So this is going to be another row of stitching that holds the fabric to this water soluble stabilizer. So you're simply going to, we don't need to use our foot control anymore. We can press the green stop start button and it's gonna finish up this leaf. Now we're ready for a magical piece. That's the Bernina Cutwork tool. And if you notice, the screen on your machine changes. So see how we've got a little warning right by our number 26? That's because it is recommending now 
that we put on 44C, which is what we're going to do. So we've got 44C selected, and I'm gonna press the X button. And now I need to do one more thing, and that's remove the needle and replace it with the cut work tool. So I'm going to use my screw key do. I just love this. This is a great tool because I can get my fingers in here a lot easier than I can with the little screwdriver, the Bernina cut work tool. So we're gonna slip that up right where the, ne right where the needle would have gone. And we're gonna tighten this. And then see where that says three? Where information on our screen is telling us to put this on position one. So all you have to do is turn this little dial to get it to the right position. So much like you change your thread colors to different color threads, when you're using the cut work tool, you're going to be changing the position from one, two, three, or four. Right now we're going to do one, we have everything else we need, so all we have to do is press the flashing green button. Ah, this happens as well. So I've got my foot on, which is good, but it wants me to literally select our zero millimeter cut work one. So now let's do that. Do you see what's happening? Did you see that I told it we have foot number 44 on the machine, but foot number 44 isn't on the machine? You can't fool the Bernina 880 plus. So we're gonna raise our foot and change to foot 44. It's amazing how I had it right next to the machine. Okay, once more, there we go. stopped and it's telling me to switch to position two and we'll start the button again position three position four. And it's finished. Once your design is complete, you can pop your little leaf out of the hoop just like this, and then you can see the stabilizers on the back there, but you can just give this a bath and some water and you'll have a leaf. Now, obviously, I want you to see here that we could have probably put more than one leaf in the hoop. When you stitch them out, if you wanna make duplicates in the hoop, you can do that, but you cannot rotate or resize them unless you do it in the software it will screw up the little mechanism on the cut work tool. That's just a pro tip. Okay, I'm back at the Bernina Embroidery software where we are ready to digitize our snitch wing. Once again, my preferred method is to start with a brand new design and then insert the artwork. The artwork is this drawing that I did of a snitch wing and we're going to select it and open it. And this is the size that I need for the one inch styrofoam balls I brought, I bought for this project. project. Uh, so there's no need to enlarge or reduce unless we were going to make a larger snitch or unless we were going to put these as wings on something else. I mean, this really looks kind of like an insect wing. So if you were making something else and wanted to go a little bit smaller, then you could certainly do that as well. So the first thing I wanna do is just make our wing to fit so that it's enlarged, I can really see what I'm working with. 
And then I'm going to deselect by clicking in the beige area. Now the next thing I want to do is I actually am going to use my digitize tools for this. There's a hundred different ways to digitize this wing and I just want you to know this is the method that I'm using. But if you have digitized shapes with the auto digitize feature right here, then that is totally something that you can do. But I'm going for the closed object tool and I'm going to pick a nice little golden color. And I am going to simply left click to set my stitching, left click to this point, left click until I have to start making my little round area here. Then I switch to right clicking. Don't forget, left click makes it pointy, right click makes it roundy. Click and then enter to set my shape. So now this is a beautiful step fill, but I don't really want a step fill. I want to create a contoury type stitch because this is going to be stitched on organza and we want it to be nice and uh, see through and ethereal like a little insect wing would look like. So I actually chose this ripple fill setting and I'm going to select that. And first you want to make sure that you get your blue selector tool to select your golden step fill. Then go down here to the ripple fill and that creates the ripple fill. Now this is really kind of interesting but not at all what I'm looking for. So my next plan is to make sure that this is selected and I'm gonna to go to object properties which is this paper with a red triangle at the corner and I'm going to make my stitch spacing at 10 millimeters and then say OK. And so now it's almost the way that I want it. So now there's other ways to adjust these um, ripple effects and that is to go to your reshape tool. It's this third one over from your select tool and there's actually a little node right in there that you can select that will change the pivot path or the ripple uh, path to start. And I'm just going to select that and I'm going to move it somewhere over here and maybe down a little bit. And so now if I delete my picture, which I don't need anymore, you can see now how that looks totally different and it's far more um, bug-like if you ask me. So that is our next step. So then I'm going to take my tool from the cut work drawer and I am going to digitize not a closed, to a closed tool like I did last time. I'm going to digitize an open tool for the stump work because we want to leave some wire exposed at the bottom of this so that we can stick that in the styrofoam ball. So let's just simply do digitize cut. So I'm going to start here by left clicking. Then I'm going to left click at that point left click until I have to start making it round, then right click, right click, right click, right click, and left click to set, then hit enter on my keyboard, and something magical happened, but something that's almost invisible. I can go over here to my color film, and I see that I have created my cut work steps. So I'm going to left click to select my cut work steps, then go back up here to object properties. Now this is fine if I just wanted to cut something out, but don't forget this is stump work where we want to add the wire. So I'm going to go to my drop down menu and select stump work piece. And now you can clearly see just like with our leaf, we have all of those different steps in creating the stump work piece. We've got the choo-choo tracks to lay the wire in between. We've got the tack down stitch and then the cover stitching along with the straight stitch, stable stitching along the edge, plus obviously our cut work designs. So let's look over here. One thing that I wanna do is look at here 
and everything looks good. I've got my stabilizing run with two passes. The distance is fine. I've got the embroidery over the wire line. I'm pretty happy with it, the way everything like that looks. I'm pretty happy with the way this leaf looks. So now my biggest goal is to make another one of these that's mirrored because we're going to have two wings on either side. So I'm going to view this to hoop. And now I'm going to use my mirror merge tool. But first I want to select all of this, not only the outside, but the inside too. So now I want to do a mirror merge. And that would allow me to do two wings side by side. And now I'm ready to send it to the machine. Now we're going to make snitch wings. This process is very similar to doing the stump work leaf for the beehive that you just saw me do. But let's, um, let me show you here. It's got a little bit more intricacies on it. There's a little design inside the wings. And then also there is um, this little overlay of organza. So we're going to start stitching first. And it wants me to put my hoop on. I'm sure you're familiar with that screen. And now we did put our 44 C foot on with this design. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the foot now and go to the 44 C. And now my first color is this golden color. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of hold my organza in place and press my green button to get started. Now that I've completed the design inside our snitch wings, it's time to create the little choo-choo tracks that are gonna hold down the wire. So now this design, if you look here, it's going to, we're gonna do this complete wing do with our wire and everything. Then we're gonna skip down to the next wing and complete that cycle. But for now, let's start with our choo-choo tracks. stitching is complete and now it's the tack down stitch for the wire and I've cut ample wire to go along my wings. I want to point out from the earlier video that we made with the beehive leaves, we didn't leave a tail or a handle of wire. We just kind of tucked it under. This time we want to leave a little bit of a handle for the snitch wing. So I'm going to leave this exposed here and now we're going to do our wing, running it right along between our choo-choo tracks. Don't forget that we're using the foot control with the sewing machine and not the green button. Just gonna bend this around the corner. We're coming around the little mountain. Trying to straighten out our wire.
And then I'm going to just curve it around a little bit more down our tracks. Don't be alarmed if you miss a little bit. You can always jump back on the track. This is just a tack down stitch. Okay, so here are my handles. So now the next thing that I'm gonna do is stitch down the satin. And I don't need the foot control for that anymore. I'm gonna simply press my green button. And it's gonna go backtrack my stitches. So, I've completed stitching around the wire and it's also completed its little stabilizing stitch around the snitch wing. Now the next thing is the machine has prompted us to put the cut work tool on, which I have, and to put it at position one, which it is at position one. So now let's go ahead and cut. And just keep completing the cycle. I moved it to position two. Now we're stitching position two. Position three. And finally, position four. All that's left is to repeat the couching the wire down and the cutting and you will have two completed snitch wings. So we have our snitch wings here as you can see they came out really cute um, and then this is another uh, shape I got this from the Bernina International Flickr site so if you go to flickr.com and search for Bernina International they have some cute pictures and I made this this um, they did a cute project where they shoved these around styrofoam balls to create like little hanging ornaments but uh, nonetheless so you would just need to add these to a hair bun <laughs> or add them to a styrofoam ball to make your little snitch or even tie them to an old skeleton key. Remember that scene from Harry Potter? Anyway, I really hope that you enjoyed making the stump work with us and I hope you try other shapes that are your own and find other great fiber collages to add them to. So if you like this video and you want to see more, don't forget to follow Bernina of Naperville on YouTube. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And if you like this video, actually like it, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Want to know when we add more videos? Click the bell and you'll get an alert every time we upload something. So for now, enjoy your sewing machines and for later, come back for more videos.